happened since since last week. How about we start off with let's start off with the fuck shit. Um, surviving R. Kelly. This documentary, like it, it, it oh, wow, it was a lot. This was a three night event, and it kind of effed everybody up. You know what I'm saying? So imagine what the victims went through, and imagine what this, some of them are still going through, because it's still going on to this day. It covers, you know, the early stages, you know what I'm saying, of R. Kelly, and, you know, how he was molested when he was a child. It went over his relationship with Umia, Melody, when she was 12, and they worked on music together and all that. He pretty much groomed her and married her when she was 15. And I'm like, how did, it, like, it, 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 it was weird to me, because it's like, yo, how did that go over, like, how did that just, like, how did that just go over everybody's heads, you know what I'm saying? Look at it, you know what I'm saying? The interview, they was wearing matching clothes, and she was like, this is my best friend in the whole world. That's like a hmm, because, you know, what does a 15-year-old have in common with somebody who's damn near 30? That's one thing. She has, she had an album titled AJ Nothing But A Number, where her in the forefront and R. Kelly in the background. And they have a song on the album called AJ Nothing But A Number that's about going all the way with somebody who's older. That would go, that, like, it didn't, like, give up a red flag to any of the people, her parents, bro, like, I know I say, like, a lot of people, like, turned their blind eyes to a whole bunch of the shit that he was doing, like, you know, hanging around high school, picking up kids you know, from around Ch Chicago, you know, grooming them to be stars, you know what I'm saying, like, it, it, it's just a lot, you know what I'm saying, that, that a lot of people turned their blind eyes to. Then it went over Sparkle. Introducing her niece to R. Kelly, and it was like, uh, but she cleaned it up, you know, after a while, because you know she she went to trial, she didn't take the money that was offered to her, and you know, yeah. So she introduced her niece to R. Kelly, thinking that R. Kelly could make her niece a star. Then uh, turns out that R. Kelly was sleeping with her niece and had her doing three songs with older women. One of the women happened to be one of the other victims whose name is Lisa. She went over how R. Kelly would make them do three songs. And then uh, she discovered that um, R. Kelly would be doing sexual acts with Sparkle's niece alone. And what? Fast forward, a uh, tape comes out and a very, it, it's very graphic. And it has R. Kelly urinating on a 14 year old girl who has to be Sparkle's niece. And it kind of shook everything up, you know what I'm saying? R. Kelly went to trial, and you know, Sparkle's family pretty much was like, you know, that wasn't her in the tape. After they done told Sparkle that she was ruining the family business, the, the, the family's name and all that, like, they, they went up there and uh, said that it wasn't the little girl in the tape. One thing that stood out to me was uh, he wasn't found guilty to, for the case. And, and, and the jurors, they did like an interview or whatever on the jurors, and one of them was just like, I, I, I don't believe them because I didn't like the way that they looked, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I didn't believe it. But, and pretty much, y'all niggas didn't want him to go to jail because y'all wanted the, uh, the remix to ignition. Do you know what I said? Like, a lot of people turned their blind eyes to this including some of the victims and i'm about to get into that now so yeah during the whole trial shit um geronda pace ends up meeting r kelly and they got into a relationship or whatever and he trained her and made her one of his victims then there was kitty jones uh who left her her her, her, her job <laughs> she left her, her job on the radio to, to be with R. Kelly after the, the, the trial. Like, it, it, I, I, I don't, it's, I, I don't know. They talked about the whole thing with the cult and how Geronda had introduced Dominique to R. Kelly. And R. Kelly turned Dominique into a little boy, pretty much. They had cut off her hair and just very boyish, and it kind of made me lose another eyebrow. And I'm like, R. Kelly, like, are you? Then it went over Joyceland, and then it went over 
the parents and how, you know, they're pretty much affected by the situation. A few of the parents, I kind of like was like, mm, about because I'm like, they kind of justify them trusting R. Kelly with their children because he wasn't found guilty. And again, the evidence is right there. How you just like turn your, your blind eye to that? Like, it like, I don't know. Another part that really stood out to me was the parents, they were outside of the house. They went to do the wellness check and none of the girls were at R. Kelly's house when they went to go do the wellness check. And I'm like, huh? Then turns out R. Kelly has friends in the law enforcement who sent out that tip to him and pretty much said, yeah, they're coming, get the hell up out of there. You know what they did? They got the hell up out of there. R. Kelly, you got friends in there. We got friends of the law enforcement to, to, to pretty much like, you know, like, ah, ah, ah. My parents, Michelle, got their daughter Dominique back and Dominique ended up going back a few days later and then she ended up going back. Which kind of validates the whole point that R. Kelly is really like psychology, like psych psychologically effing up these girls. It's like nobody is really like doing anything about it. The industry knows, the law knows, like everybody fucking knows, but nobody's saying shit about it. Then, as you all ended up getting picked by R. Kelly to come up on stage, they went up on stage, but they left the back. And, um, yeah, R. Kelly pretty much tried to, pretty much, yeah, he pretty much trapped her too. Asriel and Joycelyn are like the only girls who are like still not, haven't been heard from, their parents haven't spoken to them in, in years, and it kind of makes me so like, wow, like that's really scary, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you have to really like, protect your, your children like these girls these black girls and all of his well most of them most of his victims were black and it kind of made me just be like yo like we really gotta protect our black girls like and it, it, we have to protect them and we constantly have to worry for them too you know like we gotta worry about them going to the store without being prayed on going to a concert and then being prayed like we have to worry about stuff like that and it really just makes me think Really, we gotta protect our black girls. You know, we gotta make sure they're good. We have to really instill things in them from when they're children. Make sure that they know that they are loved and that they're appreciated. Make sure that they know what they're worth. Make sure they know their worth. So that way, they don't go out in the world vulnerable and looking for love and looking for attention from men who, who, who fuck them up pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta make sure that our girls are safe, that they're good up here that's it like another thing that kind of stood out to me about the whole thing was the response that it got from the public there's people who was like well i'm still gonna listen to r kelly's music i'm still gonna do this i'm still gonna do that and you I, you can't just separate the man from the art and it's like no you can't you can't separate the man from the art if the man is making the art based off pedophilia every song that you hear from r kelly now just gonna have a whole different like Feels. We'll have a whole different vibe because you know everything that happened behind the scenes from all the bullshit. And then it's like, yo, like, now I can't even listen to certain songs that R. Kelly wrote because I'm just like, er, you wrote, a, you wrote a song for Michael Jackson. You were not alone about somebody getting pregnant, having to get abortion. Then you wrote a song for Whitney Houston. Then you wrote a few other songs for a few other people that is like, bro, I gotta shake those songs too because it's like, I, I, you, you, the, the inspiration behind it is just like, Ah, I don't think that has got people in the friends of these young jocks hair. Did y'all see his new hairdo? I'm starting to feel like young jock just does these like crazy things with his hair because he knows that it's gonna get people talking. And I kind of feel like he like, he thrives off of that attention. And that haircut, you know what it gives me? The mom. Who drives a Nissan Maxima or Nissan Ultima. Facebook bio or Instagram bio, my son is my king. And he had that exact haircut. Different color, same cut. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's what that remind me of. There was a video that surfaced online of two young men walking into a 7 Eleven and, you know, attempting to rob the store. And it was instant karma because I tried to rob the store with fake guns and then there was a security guard outside who had a real gun and ended up shooting one of y'all niggas in the arm. Like, so like, it, 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 I have so many questions. I'm like, why? 
You didn't think this through clearly. You didn't think this through clearly enough. I'm not encouraging, robbing, scamming, finessing. What I will say is, man, if you gonna do it, do it right. Do it right. Any question, did our generation really master hip hop? Our generation mastered hip hop. Facts. To, uh, at his defense, okay, production wise, yes. Lyrically, no. The production of hip hop has gotten better. Lyrically, it has gotten worse. So, uh, like, it's like, oh, uh, agree, disagree, like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm a big hip hop fan. I'm a fan of hip hop, period. So, I feel like times are times times change, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody's gonna be like as lyrically talented as the OGs. Not everybody's gonna be a J. Everybody gonna be a big, everybody gonna be a Nas, and everybody gonna be a Pac, nobody gonna be Wu Tang clan, nobody gonna be Styles, Kiss. Times change, certain things are accepted and certain things are. So yeah. So now it's accepted to not be as lyrically talented as long as you got a flow or you got nice beat behind you, that's all it takes to make it into hip hop. That's it. In hip hop, that's all it takes to make it. And it's kind of fucked up because there's a lot of people out here that's like lyrically talented, but they don't get as much recognition because, you know, of all the, all the because of all the other rap that's out here. But uh, that's all I'll say about that. More talk of the internet has been Tiffany Haddish. Seriously, Tiffany Haddish did a show and it was bad. She got jokes, she wasn't funny. She was drinking, you know what I'm saying? And people were walking out and everybody was upset. It was like, you know, if I pay for a show, I wanna see a show, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're doing your job, pretty much. So you gotta do your job. You're a comedian, you have to tell jokes, and you have to be funny, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not really here for how people are like going so hard to get her out of here, you know what I'm saying? Like. I like Tiffany Haddish, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like her, I respect her come up. And a lot of people are like really going hard to get her the fuck up out of here, but it's like, mm, like, uh, like I, I, I don't know. Like, I kind of go back and forth with it. It's like, yeah, you know, I would be pissed off too if I paid for a show and I'm not really getting what I paid for. So yeah, I'd be pissed off about that. But I noticed that the people who want to cancel her are the same people who are still defending R. Kelly to this day. It's like, you know. Where are your morals at? You know what I'm saying? Where are your morals at here? You know what I'm saying? But I like Tiffany Haddish. I actually think she's funny. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm hoping that she redeems herself. I'm hoping that, you know, she can make a comeback from that. But hey, whatever. <laughs> but what else has happened? The government shutdown. Uh... Donald Trump, a.k.a. number 45, that's all I want to call it. Number 45 is going hard to really build this wall. And pretty much, our taxes are, 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 are at risk here. Our, 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 our taxes are at risk because he wants to build this wall. If I'm like taxes, I, I just got to catch this charge. That, that, that's what it is. Oh yeah, and Santoya Brown, and for those who don't know about Santoya Brown, she was forced into sex trafficking at the age of 16, and she ended up murdering her pimp, which caused her to get sentenced to 54 years in prison. Turns out she's getting out of prison in August, and you know, she's getting 10 years on parole. I appreciate the fact that, you know, she's getting out of prison because the justice system is just very flawed. There's a cycle that nobody really pays attention to nowadays. A man or a woman who's been abused of any sort. Their abuser walks around untouched, but the moment they decide to retaliate and it goes too far, they end up being punished for that. When a person who deserves to be punished did not get anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird. And then I know it's like that happens a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, of uh, uh, somebody gets murdered. The murderer is still walking around here untouched because the people aren't doing their job. So another person who was a family member or a friend who or the person who got murdered, they're like, I gotta take it into my own hand. And they do something. Then they get penalized for it. And they're like, it, it happens. It happens a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, people don't look at the circumstances. They just look at the crime and that's it. I just feel like when you start looking into these sentences and 
these people and these crimes and what happened and the circumstances behind it and the, and the principles, you know what I'm saying? And then you make a decision. That's it. That concludes the second episode of Mark Talk. I hope y'all enjoyed today's episode. Uh, stay tuned for episode three. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, yeah, that's it, man. I'm out.